there's Utah, which I actually did years and years ago and loved my experience with them. Still continue to work with them today. So I want to bring in Miss Nancy with Big Brothers Big Sisters Utah. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Jenny. Hi. And of course, Levi, he is here with Regents Blue Cross Blue Shield. Hi, Levi. Good to see you again. Hi, good to see you as well. Okay, so Levi, I want to start with you because Regents, you guys are so good about your community outreach and you're constantly reaching out to others. So tell me about your partnership with BBBSU. Yeah, so uh, I, you know, I serve on their board of directors and I have for a number of years. And, and what's great about Big Brothers Big Sisters of Utah is um, you know, they've been involved in the community since 1978 um, with, with mentoring uh, children ages 6 to 18. Um, you know, in 2020, uh, we were we mentored over a thousand children out in the community, wow. out in the community, um, 82 percent of which were, were living in poverty. Um, our work is even more important in the community at this time because more kids are at risk, you know, due to the pandemic. Um, and they've been marginalized for a number of reasons, you know, economic uncertainty, increased mental health challenges and more children in our state need mentors. Um, you know, our you know, current littles, which are, which are the, you know, which are the children and, you know, bigs, which are, which are, our, which are our, our, uh, our mentors, um, you know, or, you know, they, 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 the littles need stable support from our bigs. Okay. Um, you know, in Utah, we have, you know, we have such a great state for volunteerism and we, we appreciate all the support we get from our volunteers. Um, that being said, we have still 65 Utah children that are waiting for a mentor today. Um, and in particularly, it's really a struggle to get, you know, male mentors. Um, this past summer, we ran a campaign for Real Men Mentor, and luckily we were able to meet our goal for recruiting um, male mentors, but we're always looking for more men to mentor, um, to mentor uh, uh, little, little boys. And so, um, you know, we're always looking for that. Um, again, youth mentoring makes such a real difference in children's lives throughout the state. It significantly increases their ability to contribute to society as, a, as adults. And studies show that, you know, mentored youth have better school attendance and grades and, and better outcomes. Yeah, having that big in their life really does mean such a big difference. And I don't know, Nancy, when I started with Big Brothers Big Sisters, I, you know, I don't know if I realized the impact until I started doing it. And then I was like, oh, my gosh, like this sweet girl looked up to me so much. And I looked up to her and, you know, at the same time. Yeah, it's so true. We really find that I think um, we hear from our bigs that they feel the impact maybe as much or more than uh, the impact that they're sharing with a, a young person. But what we see um, when we look at our statistics statewide is that uh, about 93% of kids uh, find that they have better relationships with peers and um, better self-confidence. And about 94% of kids tell us they have higher as aspirations for their educational attainment. And so, you know, those are kind. Those are the kinds of things that really can change the trajectory of a young child's life, right? And yeah, um, even even as a teenager, right? Some of the kids yeah. we match are are 15 years old, mm -hmm. um, and and you might think that they're a little too old, but um, I think having a positive role model in your life really makes a difference for you, um, whether you're whether you're six or whether you're 15. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely does. And I know that I, well, I'm so excited because we have the big gala tomorrow in person this year instead of virtual, which I'm especially excited about. Now, while people can't get tickets for the gala this late in the game, they can still at least contribute by doing the silent auction online. Absolutely. We have so many fun, um, more than 100 uh, I items and baskets available for people to bid on. Uh, through the silent auction, and they can get registered for that on our website, which is bbbsu.org. Fantastic. Nancy, Levi, so great to see you both, and I will see you both tomorrow. Thanks so much, Jenny. See you then. Thanks, Jenny. I feel cloth of silk brocade. I taste broth, my mother Wow, so beautiful. Very powerful music to an important story. Gold Mountain is playing now in West Valley City, and we're talking to the man who composed it coming up next. We down the trees, we wrench our knees, we pass the rock, we can really walk. We dig the dirt, our bodies hurt, building the Central Pacific Railroad. 
Wow, very, very amazing. Sounds beautiful. And you are listening to Gold Mountain. It is playing now in West Valley, and it is the world premiere. And we are lucky enough to premiere it right here in Utah. I want to bring in the writer and composer, Jason Ma. Jason, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jenny. Hey, you know, this is so exciting that we get to premiere this, and you. this is 24 years in the making. Wow. Yes. I mean, congratulations. Thank you so much. So let's t tell me first about Gold Mountain. Uh, Gold Mountain, um, I would call it the Chinese Railroad Worker musical. Uh, it takes place in 1866. Mm -hmm. uh, the central protagonist is a young man whose job it is to light fuses in, of the explosives in the tunnels and then run out before the explosion can kill him. And that is his job. And wow. he does it over and over again. He also falls in love with a young Chinese woman. Wow. Well, and it, so it's just, I mean, and it's this, based on these true stories and the facts of, you know, what happened. And it takes us back to, like you said, 1866. And I do think it's pretty cool, you know, with just the ties that we have here in Utah with the Golden Spike mm -hmm. and the railroad and just, uh, you know, how impactful that was for our community as well to have this premiering right here. It is um, such an honor to be here. Uh, Utah is kind of the perfect home for a show like this. Mm -hmm. uh, the Chinese are this... Um, community-based, family-based culture. Uh, Utah, the love for the arts is baked into your DNA and um, history. The connection to history here in this state is so strong. And so uh, all those elements combine to make Utah the perfect home for this show. And Jason, you live between Los Angeles and New York City. I want to talk about the 24 years of <laughs> the labor of love that you put into this. You wrote this musical in a few months, but it is, it's is—it's taken you that long to get it to come to life. Tell us about it. Uh, you know, I wrote this show while I was doing, uh, I was in Miss Saigon uh, on Broadway uh -huh. in the 90s. And um, the story just came to me. Um, one of the songs in the middle of the show was written first. Uh -huh. And... Uh, I think what was interesting about the journey of getting this show to this point is that every few years I would bring the show out and uh, show it to people. And uh, as the years passed, I actually got to see how the world has changed uh, in its acceptance of stories uh, like this. And um, I feel like, you know, thank goodness for the internet and YouTube. Yes. The more and more people begin to realize that we live in a global society and that mm -hmm. there are people from all over with all different cultures and music and stories to tell that, uh, you know, uh, we got to this point where this show has been welcomed with open arms um, by so many and especially by Utah Shakespeare Festival. We're so grateful to them. I love it. Well. It, it's crazy to me that in my lifetime the world has changed that much because it's still bizarre to me that you know this wasn't accepted 24 years ago and um, so I, I'm, I'm applauding all of us I guess for yes. being more accepting now and I love it that we get to premiere this and I hope to see it just go very very far so tell us about West Valley and um, performing arts and how we can see it uh, you can go to the Utah Shakespeare Festival website mm -hmm. um, to buy tickets uh, it's at the West Valley Performing Arts Center a beautiful theater in the round and uh, is perfect for our show. There's a big tunnel in the middle, train tracks, hills and mountains. It's really a lovely production. Wow. Well, I am going to have to jump on and grab tickets because it does just look absolutely fantastic. I'm a big fan of musicals and I also love when I get to learn something, you know. So if we're, for those of us that um, will be going, what do you want us to take away from this? I think more than anything, uh, as our audiences get invested in this story. I want people to think about our country and who an American is and what an American is. We are a country of immigrants from the yeah. Mayflower onward. And I think uh, as we continue to examine this question of who is an American, uh, if they just bring with them the lives and the hearts and the souls of these characters, uh, it may help people understand better um, what people come to this country for Absolutely. and that we're all Americans. Yeah, well, so beautiful. Jason, it's a pleasure to meet you and congratulations. You. I look forward to it. Thanks so much. Of course. And coming up on the show, no one should be left out of having a warm turkey dinner on Thanksgiving. Up next, we're talking about ways you can help the less fortunate in our community.
Now, most of us are thinking about our Thanksgiving dinner and, you know, who's coming and all the sides and everything else that we're going to be putting on the table. But we have to remember that there are people who won't be able to afford that Thanksgiving meal. I have Pastor Joe in studio with me. Pastor Joe, good to see you. Good to be here. I know it's it's been a while, so it's nice to have you back in studio. But Salt Lake City Mission, you guys give back so much to people in need, especially this time of year when there are a lot of hungry people. Yes, well, you know, um, we're just trying to do our part and help people. Mm -hmm. Fabulous traditions we have in this country, and unfortunately, people are struggling to get prepared. Yes, yeah. Well, tell them about Salt Lake City Mission, what you guys do, your mission, and then how we can help. Well, uh, we've been in the area for almost 30 years, and um, one of the things we do is uh, serve people with food boxes and meals, of course, and so just another year trying to get prepared for Thanksgiving week. Now, for somebody that doesn't understand what the food box is, explain that. Well, um, so we are trying to give out as many uh, traditional food boxes with a turkey and mashed potatoes and gravy and, and green beans and, you know, the basic fixings. But um, we've had to get a little more creative this year. Uh, things are more expensive and, and the turkeys are a little more rare right now in getting yeah. them. So um, some of the folks are going to get other, other things in the box, but if we're going to try to keep our numbers to reach as many as possible, but we're still trying to make our goals and, and provide as many families with f traditional food boxes as well as the meal, which we're not doing a sit down meal again because of the current situation, but we are okay. delivering to a number of service providers already prepared meals. Good. So how about your numbers? You know, you talk about how many boxes you want to do. Do you have a goal in mind or do you have a rough estimate of what you normally do this time of year? Well, you know, in the average years we were doing uh, about 500 boxes during the holidays and last year, of course, with a, a lot of support and because of the COVID, uh, we did over 7,500 boxes wow. a month of November. Talk about um, a jump in numbers. Yes. So. So I don't know that we're gonna hit that, that level of need, but we are already trying to do over 3,000 and then of course provide meals to the service providers as well. Good. Which thankfully we have a caterer that's going to be uh, preparing those Utah food services. Good, well how do we help? How can we get involved either financially or by volunteering? Well, we're having food drives around the community so you can get a, and do some shopping while you're out or you can go to the mission's website, saltlakecitymission.org, and give a financial contribution okay. or give us a phone call. And turkeys, if people do want to go out and purchase a turkey, they can do that because that's obviously what you're going to be in most need of. Yes, turkeys, the guest of honor is in short supply right now, so um, we're doing pretty good on much of the other stuff, but any help uh, would be great because there just doesn't seem to be enough to go around right now. Got it. Yeah. And of course, they can do the yams, mashed potatoes, other things like that. If, you know, they want to grab a box of goods, anything like that, you guys are accepting of it because you're in need of a lot of stuff. So absolutely. Yeah. Well, so good to see you, Pastor Joe, and we'll see you again soon. Happy holidays. Thank you. Coming up from the Clark Planetarium, we're going to levitate some ping pong balls. Don't go anywhere. And also coming up, a restaurant with a view and not a bad seat in the house. Chef Ernesto from Overlook is here with a recipe from his winter menu. Pear and brie salad sounds and looks delicious. We'll see you back here soon. You're watching Fox 13's The Place. And welcome back to the show secrets out. I love food. I do. And I love new restaurants. So I'm really excited about Overlook, which is at Black Rock Mountain Resort, a new resort uh, in Wasatch County. And we have Chef Ernesto here who we go way back to your days in Park City yes. with all your fine dining that you've done over the years. So yes. good to see you again. Thank you so much. Thanks for yeah, having me. Of course. So before we dive into your recipe, tell me about the new resort. Well, this is a brand new resort. It's a new development uh, near to Park City, five minutes away from Deer Valley in Park City. Um, we have the really nice building with really nice view over the hills, uh, mountains from Deer Valley and Park City mm -hmm. Resort. And it's 
in town and outside the town. So it's convenience like it. for yes. everybody to be there. Yeah, you're overlooking the resorts as well as Jordan Nell, all of that, which is, just looks beautiful. It's on your way if you're driving toward Camas. That's where you'll see the resort. And then in the resort is Overlook Restaurant, which of course overlooks all of those beautiful things. So, and you have a lot of variety on your menu. I definitely do. It comes from good salads, uh, pastas, steaks, and pizza, New York style pizza, really nice Yummy. and crispy crust. And yes, Yummy. we ready to go to I mean, feed most of the people we can Absolutely, fit. you always do. And Ernesto knows this thing. He's been in the fine dining industry for a lot of years. So what are we making today? Well, today I decided to make something really simple okay. for these holidays coming. Something you can, you know, you lay for the function or you mm -hmm. coming home late or something from work. You can stop by any grocery store and buy all okay. the ingredients I present that today. The reason is sometimes cooking you feel like I don't want to really cook, but something <laughs> healthy and easy is always really convenient. <laughs> That's me every so, day. So I can do this salad is what you're saying. Absolutely. You can okay. definitely do the salads. Like I say, all the ingredients, they're right there. Okay. What do I need, Ernesto? So basically what you what you need to have is like a Dijon mustard. Okay. Um, I, I make some homemade uh, sweet potato chips. Uh, mine like won't a, be homemade, but I might have to come get them from you. <laughs> well, you can get it. And actually, in a grocery store, they have it in a bag okay, ready to go, so you can even use. And this for this salad, I choose pears. And uh, you can have, follow the season, you can have apples, or you can have peaches Whichever in a one. peach season. Okay. So I decided to do um, pears and the sweet potatoes and jams. Yummy. Okay. Absolutely. And a creamy brie cheese, so any store has it. Perfect. Okay, so we just assemble it all together, and then the vinaigrette, right, is what Absolutely. We That's okay. what we're going to do. Okay, do we want to assemble it now or we, I, let's we go for that. it. Let's, let's do, do it. it. Let's so get going on some of it. I have the recipe for you guys, okay. but uh, definitely our base is going to be uh, the little Dijon mustard. Okay. Like half a spoon. And we're going to have like a rice vinegar. Okay. And this is for the vinaigrette. Uh, this is for the vinaigrette, Perfect. yes. I did um, apple juice reduction, so okay. I reduced like uh, two half gallons to like basically what it is right here, like okay. three cups. So Perfect. they get nice and sweet. I get really nice uh, local honey. Yeah, but of course. And I always feel like the local honeys are always the best. Yes, the I actually my sous chef Debbie Carls, uh, she may she has her own farm. And she makes her own honey. Well, lucky you. So, yeah, you get right? the best of the best. Absolutely. So we do that. We mix it in a little mixing bowl, the vinaigrette, and the little apple juice reduction. Perfect. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a little break, and then we're going to be finishing the vinaigrette. We'll put the salad all together for you. If they do want to come and visit you, again, you're on the way to Camas, just right there. Absolutely. And how do they get um, more information online? Well, if you're coming from Port City, it's right turn to Camas. If mm -hmm. you're coming from Salt Lake City, you can just pass the junction, turn to Port City, okay. go to the Highway 40, next junction, take your right to back 40, and just follow the road, next junction right there, and your left, there you go. before you get to Camas. It's like right there. And you can go to blackrockresort.com for, or is it, say that right? Yes, .com. Okay, you can go online and get more information. Black Rock Mountain Resort, there we go, .com for more Absolutely. information. Absolutely. Ernesto, thank you so much for being yeah. here. We'll be back Thanks in just a minute. Perfect. Hey everybody from the Clark Planetarium, where science is yet again coming alive. My friend Cynthia Checkets joining me to give me another great science lesson. What are we learning today, Cynthia? Oh, today, I'm really stoked because I love flying. I've always wanted to levitate. It's a, it takes a lot of work to levitate a whole human being. Yeah, well, yeah. I know, right? <laughs> but, but we have a trick to do it today with some smaller items. Okay. And I've got a wonderful tool here. I mean, I could give you a little. Oh, that actually feels really nice. <laughs> Neither of us have hair, though. We can't. We can't test it on our hair. No, we, we can't. Sadly, sadly. <laughs> but you, you felt the flow, right? I did. There's a nice breeze. So this is what a mini leaf blower. It's a mini right? leaf blower. Okay. So the experiment we're doing, you can actually do with a hair dryer as well. Okay. But the the key is that we have that airflow, right? Yep. That I mean, science, physicists like to call that fl a fluid. Air is a fluid, and so it's flowing. And the flowing does all sorts of cool stuff. Have you ever, ever, ever heard of Bernoulli's Principle? I've heard of it, I don't know what it is. Well so. now you can sound really smart at a cocktail party, ready? Do tell. Bernoulli's Principle is what helps airplanes fly. Okay. So it's all about the airflow moving over the different shapes of objects, changes the pressures, all that good stuff. Really what it means is that we can make stuff float. All right. So here's, here's the test, ready? I'm gonna get this flowing straight up and here's your ping pong ball, Chris. Okay. I'm gonna have you add it to the flow and see if you can get it to float. Oh! 
Oh, look at that! Isn't that great? That's awesome. So, whoop! There it goes. Let's, we got more. We got more. I got it. Damn. So the upward flow counteracts gravity pushing down, and the flow on the outside changes the pressure to hold the ping pong balls in place. Ready? Okay. You're gonna add yours. I'm gonna see if I can add another one. All right. Got it. Go. Whoa! Yeah! Okay. Take that. Slowly lower it over the top. <laughs> Isn't that great? So that one, all the air gets forced up through the toilet paper roll yeah. and it creates lower pressure, which sucks the ball up and out. So it's almost like a cannon. It's like a cannon, but we're not, we're not using any force. We're just relying on the airflow. That's okay. incredible. We got one more. Let's okay. do a ping pong ball. Let's see if we can get the balloon. Okay. Add it on top there. On top? Yeah. All right. <laughs> this is incredible. I can even move it a little bit. See that? But it stays within the airflow because of that change in pressure. Now, can I ask a question? Of course. Wow. Look at that. What? That's incredible. <laughs> Look at that. Why, why is it, I would assume like this ball would take up all the airspace, uh, and, but why is it, there's still enough air flowing? For the balloon, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it's flowing underneath and it's flowing around. The air that flows around will continue going up and catch the balloon as well. That's, that's incredible. So, uh, if people want to do a, a demonstration like this at home, where should they go? If you want more information about experiments or other events, you can go to ClarkPlanetarium.org to learn more about science experiments like this and also learn just about our exhibits. They're always free. You can come check out what we've got going on at the planetarium. And like you, you said the operable word, free. Free. Admission is always free here at the of Clark course. Planetarium. This is so great. What was the principle one more time? Bernoulli's principle. Bernoulli's principle. There you go. I'm going to use that at my next cocktail party. Kids, you can use that at your next birthday party. There you are. Cynthia, <laughs> thank right. you. You're welcome. Thank you guys, that is so cool.